Hey everyone, welcome back with a new lecture with ISO IEC 17025 2017 edition and now process requirement which is the most important part for any analyst inside the lab. Under process requirement first point review of request tenders and contracts. The objective of this part is to ensure that the lab has the capability and resources to meet customer requirements in terms of lab activities and the validity of results. And so customer requirements shall be defined, documented and understood. And based on customer requirements, lab shall make a contract, a contract with the customer, ensuring that, that they are competent enough in performing this lab activity and also has all facilities related to his lab activity. In this case, the lab considered as a service supplier because the lab providing service to the customer. So the lab shall ensure that the customer receives the service which meets his requirements. First requirement of this section, lab shall have a procedure. So the lab shall prepare a procedure for review of request tenders and contracts. And this procedure shall ensure that Requirements for the customer are defined, documented and understood. And lab has the capability and the resources to meet customer requirement. And if the lab has the capability and the resources to perform the lab activity, but for unforeseen reason, they cannot do some activity. They don't have the competence, the capability and the resources to do some activity. They couldn't get the resources required to this lab activity. Activity. In this case, the lab shall contact external provider and this point related to subcontract. So in this case, the lab shall contact external provider. The lab will make a subcontract, temporary subcontract with the external provider for some time to do this activity until they will get the resources required for this lab activity and shall advise the customer and gain customer approval so that will not be done before customer approval so based on clause number six six external provided products and service explained before the lab shall ensure that the external provider had all capability and the resources to meet the customer requirements but this service or this subcontract shall be temporary subcontract not permanent subcontract because according to clause number five three structural requirement any external provided activity that's permanent shall be excluded from the list of activities done by the lab. If you know that you will never be able to do this activity for the customer, in this case you shall make a permanent subcontract with the external provider, but you will not be responsible after that for this lab activity. But if it's temporary for unforeseen reason, as I said, if you cannot get the resources required for this lab activity for some time and after that you will be able to get the capability and the resources for this lab activity in this case you shall make a temporary subcontract with the external provider and you shall gain the, ex the customer approval before that and also the lab shall use appropriate methods which are fit for purpose and shall evaluate the performance of these methods to ensure that they can get accurate and reliable results using these methods appropriate methods which, uh, which are fit for purpose are selected to meet the customer requirement but if the method requested by the customer is inappropriate or out of date the lab shall inform him so as in this point lab shall inform the customer if the method requested by him is inappropriate or out of date and there is a very important note in this point when the lab use a reference method for analysis of a specific target analytes, in this case, the lab shall use the latest update of this method. But if the lab for unforeseen reason cannot use the latest update of this method, in this case, the lab shall confirm if the method used is still valid and we can get a valid results using this method without transferring to the updated one. In this case, they shall compare between both of them.
and that will be by analysis replicate analysis of sample spike with known concentration of target analytes or better to use certified reference material replicate analysis of certified reference materials and this can be analyzed by both of this method old method and updated method and if the results were close together you will calculate relative standard deviation and also a recovery for each results and for the mean recovery and if the results were valid so in this case you can use the old method and also you can compare between both of them using f test and t test but what does it mean statement of conformity as i explained before statement of conformity is conformity of sample results to a specific regulation and that means the sample is accepted or rejected but according to which standard as example this standard such as european standard or codex standard or whatever standard so your sample is accepted or rejected but according to which standard and a simple example to understand this point when the customer want to sell a product to any country and in this country they have their specific regulation specific standard as example european standard they follow european standard to accept or reject the samples in this case the customer will request from the lab to give him statement of conformity acceptance or rejection of his samples according to this standard and in this case the lab shall agree with him so decision rule shall be clearly defined communicated to and agreed with the customer and decision rule as i explained before in details is a new point added to this edition after the analyst will analyze the sample he will send the result to the management plus minus measurement uncertainty and the decision will be taken for acceptance or rejection of the samples by the management and also the type of decision rule required shall be mentioned in the contract and shall be agreed with the customer any difference between request or tenders and contracts shall be resolved before starting the lab activities whatever the lab request for the lab activity from instruments or chemicals shall be compatible with whatever inside the contract and if there is any change between request or tenders and contracts shall be resolved before starting the lab activities and each contract shall be accepted by the customer and the lab but if there is any deviation requested by the customer this deviation shall not affect the integrity of the lab or validity of result if there is any deviation requested by the customer that will affect the lab activity or affect the integrity of the results shall not be accepted by the lab and at the end the contract will be signed by the customer and the lab and also the customer shall be notified if there is any deviation in the contract by the lab so if there is any deviation requested by the customer that will affect the integrity of results or affect the lab activity shall not be accepted by the lab and the lab shall convince the customer that this deviation will affect the integrity of results so it will not be accepted by both of them and also for the rights of the customer shall be notif notified if there is any deviation in the contract done by the lab and if the contract amended after starting the lab activity the contract shall be reviewed again and any amendment shall be communicated to all affected personnel actually i found all of these three points are similar only repeated points if there is any deviation or amendment in the contract by the lab or the customer before or after starting the lab activity at the beginning and very important this amendment shall not affect the validity of results but if the amendment was after starting the lab activity so the contract shall be reviewed again and if this amendment or deviation is important for the lab activity so the lab shall communicate this to the customer and clear, clearly define this to him and also that shall be accepted by the customer and also if there is any deviation by the customer will be done by the customer or requested by the customer that deviation shall not affect the validity of results or integrity of the lab so from the lab side quality officer shall always ensure that there is no deviations in the lab activities because that will affect on the quality management system so he shall 
eliminate or reduce the risk due to deviations in the lab activities by continuous monitoring and auditing for the lab activities and if there is any deviation during the year for any of lab activities related to the customer shall be communicated by the technical officer of the unit to the quality officer before starting the lab activity with some evidence to ensure that this deviation will not affect the validity of results but it will make it better so the quality officer will make deviation form and he will write the evidence for change or any amendment or deviation and he will communicate this to the customer and the contract also will be reviewed again and accepted by the customer and the lab then they can start the lab activity and this point relating to the communication between the lab and the customer relating to his lab activity the customer has all rights to verify the performance of his lab activity or to see the lab activity to provide and that also will provide confidence to the customer about the lab so the lab shall cooperate with the customer to clarify the customer's request and also in monitoring the performance of his lab activity so the lab shall provide him access to the specified area for his lab activity in the lab and also to verify the performance of lab activity by analysis of items needed by the customer the customer has all rights to ensure that the lab provide him with the valid results relating to his lab activity and he can do this by any way but inside the system not from outside the system and the last requirement of this clause records shall be retained any record between the customer and the lab shall be retained in the lab to keep the rights of the lab records for reviews including any significant change in the contract shall be retained also records of pertinent discussion with the customer if there is any discussion with the customer even through emails shall be retained relating to the customer request or results of lab activity so any record or any communication between the lab and the customer through emails or through, through any form or paper shall be retained with the lab to keep the rights of the lab at the end of this long and boring lecture my suggestion on how to implement this clause many procedures should be prepared first procedure review of request tenders and contracts and that will be explained here purchasing services and supplies and this is very important SOP to define all requirement related to lab activities and that's mentioned in clause 6.6 and customer service to define customer rights so you shall prepare a procedure for review of request tenders and contracts the purpose of this procedure to ensure that the lab has the competence and the resources to meet customer requirements in terms of lab activities and the validity of results the scope applied to all lab activities and resources inside the lab and in the procedure first point customer request the customer will request from the lab to perform a new lab activity to analyze specific parameters in a specific matrix so the quality officer or quality lead or quality manager will receive a customer request related to any new lab activity then he will send this request to the responsible persons to the technical lead of this unit and the technical lead of this unit will ensure that the lab has the competence and the resources to perform this lab activity these resources and competence include the following points method which is fit for purpose appropriate method to analyze these parameters in the, the specific matrix and the instrument the instrument which is fit to analyze these parameters uh, using this method and all chemicals required for this type of analysis and also the auxiliary apparatus and also he, show, he shall ensure that quality control procedures followed inside the lab for uh, for this type of analysis according to iso iec 17 or 25 2017 edition and other international guidelines second point in the procedure contract with the customer lab shall sign a contract with the customer and that contract will include the following 
lab has the competence and the resources to meet his requirement to perform his lab activity and get a valid results. When the customer requests a statement of conformity to a specific regulation, lab shall agree and that's related to decision rule and statement of conformity that's explained before. Customer shall be notified also if there is any deviation in the contract before starting the lab activity. Any amendment in the contract shall be reviewed again before starting the lab activity and agreed by both of them, customer and the lab. Lab shall provide the customer access to his lab activity to ensure the performance of this lab activity and contract at the end shall be signed by both of them. And you should know that this contract can be different from lab to another lab based on their structure and organization. If the lab is under government authority or company, in this case, the lab is responsible to perform any lab activity requested from him, from the company or this government authority. So they will be his customer. And if they request any new lab activity, he shall perform. So there is no need to make a contract in this case between the lab and his government or his company. But if the lab, the lab is private lab, in this case, there shall be a contract between the lab and the customer for any new lab activity. A research lab also can be like the lab under government authority. As example, if the research lab under university, in this case, if they requested any research from this lab, to be performed for any student, as example, in this case, the research lab shall perform and there is no need for a contract between this student or the university and this research lab. But if the research lab is private also, in this case, they shall make a contract between them and the customer. That was the end of my lecture for today. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.